and it's the biggest consulate in, in the city. So it seems like the oh, American yeah, right consulate embassies are the biggest ones all across Africa. Example, I was in Senegal, they say it was the biggest one. I was in Benin, they say it was the biggest one. In and Casablanca, we have the consulate. In Rabat, there is the embassy. An embassy. Rabat, most of the embassies, they are located in Rabat, the capital. At Casablanca, we have many consulates here. I see all the international flags. On the right side, you will notice a big building. This is a Catholic church called the Sacred Heart Church. It used, it was built, it was a Spanish built church in 1930s, and it used to function as a Catholic church until 1956, which was the year of the independence in Morocco. Ever since, it's got, it got closed and still closed ever since. When it got closed, it was used as a shelter for refugees, uh, to host refugees from uh, uh, the Portuguese, the Spanish, the French, they use it as a shelter. After that, it got closed and still closed ever since. Now they only open it for <clears throat> for cultural events, like if there is uh, an art gallery, fashion show, and specific cultural events, they host them here. It no longer serves as a Catholic church. And Morocco, they kept it as a respect for Christianity and also as a symbol for Christianity, because it's one of the religions that we have here in Morocco. And, uh, however, this is not the only church that we have. There are many other churches in the city and across the country that are still functional every day, as long uh, as well as uh, synagogues as well for Jewish people. Safety situation. What's that about? Is it a safe place you can just walk about or...? Yeah, Morocco is a very safe country. Safety is not, a, uh, is not a question here. Any city in Morocco, it's all safe. You can go out at 2 a.m. at night, you will be safe. So on the right side, there is a big park called Arabic Park. Casablanca lacks the green spaces. This is one of the very few parks that we have in Casablanca. It's a very big park, as you can see. Do you have a home, a homeless population here? There is, there are some homeless people you would notice, but very, very, very rare to notice a, a homeless person. Uh, because yeah. in Morocco, we don't leave, uh, we don't let people to be homeless. And our family, if you don't have, if you're poor, you don't have where to live, your family will always offer you a place to stay. So if you see a homeless uh, person, it means it's their own choice. It's their option. They decided to, to stay in this country. That's very interesting because uh, it does came from another great economy, which is South Africa. Mm. And the nice parts and the beautiful parts are, are just as beautiful, but then it has a, a, a terrible homeless poverty um, you know, section as far as... So again, it has to be the level of uh, leadership and the level of government. Yeah. And also, you mentioned about the education system. So we're just yes. trying to. Most of us has been to different parts of Africa, and we're just here, and we're just trying yeah. to wonder why. This, this is why you why this is so exceptional. Yeah, we to, to learn. To learn exactly. Mm -hmm. So but this is well to be taking notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to come back there for longer. Taking notes as far as this is the way the government and country, the country pulled itself. This is incredible. I mean, to have like a light homeless population. It's another mosque. So here oh, on the right yeah. side, this is a, a, a square, one of the main squares in Casablanca. It's called Muhammad the Fifth Square. It's known as the Pigeon Square. This is the big name for it. And because pigeons are here, they come for the Ooh, food and for the water. <laughs> this square, it has the, the city's most important administrative buildings. They are located here. Like this big building in front of us, this is the courthouse. If you look up in the black bar, you can see the two languages. 
On the side there is the French consulate, on the right side. On the left side is a military protectorate. And the building behind us with the clock tower on the right side, this is a city hall. And on the left side there is the post office and uh, also taxes department. And there is also the central bank. And this white big building on the left side, it was, uh, it was uh, a, a theater that was finished construction in early 2020, which was COVID, during COVID. Okay, so it's been four years completely finished like this, but not yet open. We don't know what is the occasion they are waiting for. However, it's been like this for uh, um, for four years now. So on the right side, back to the right side, this square, it's a place where families they like to bring their kids in the evening to chase pigeons. You know, kids they like <laughs> to with, play with pigeons. And there are some guys who are selling food, which people like to buy and feed the pigeons out of kindness. And also they drink from the fountain, which has water all the time. And uh, and uh, you guys call them flying rats, right? The pigeons. Uh, I've been told that you call them flying rats. So this is the central hub of Casablanca's new town over here. I live right behind this big building, the court house. That's where I live. I live with my family. In Morocco, we like to live with our family until we get married. As long as I'm still not married yet, so I still live with my family. And uh, in Morocco, most of the people do it that way. We like to stay as close to our family as possible until we get married. Because once you are married, then you will be jailed with your partner for the rest of your life. <laughs> And you can notice now uh, in the front there is the tramway coming. We have the tramway in two cities in Morocco. We have it in Casablanca and in Rabat. In Casablanca we have it in red, as you can see, and in Rabat we have it in grey. It's uh, we have it since 2012. So is it free public and transport yeah. or? No, this is uh, you buy a ticket, but this is it's a very long line to travel from from one terminal to the other. It will take you about two hours, and uh, uh, people like the tramway because uh, the ticket is cheap. For one ticket, it costs you eight dirhams, which is equivalent to eighty cents in American. Uh, so that's less than one dollar, and uh, you can you can land in any station. Like once you get in. It doesn't matter which station you drop off. So it's very affordable for people. And also it's environmental friendly because it's electric. So now this is downtown. We are at the city center. That's why it's busy with traffic. And this area is known for Art Deco. Art Deco is, is a is type of architecture that was built by French people. If you look further, these buildings that you see on the left and on the right, they make you feel like you are in France or in Spain, because all of these buildings, they were built by French in 1916. So when you are in Casablanca, you feel like if you are in Europe. Unlike Fez or Marrakesh, for example, in Fez and Marrakesh, you feel that you are in a typical Arabian country. In Casablanca, you feel like you are in uh, Europe. So that's mostly because of the architecture and this architecture is called Art Deco Ah, 
Is this a UN building that we just passed? On the behind us? With the many flags. With the many flags. Uh, it's a hotel. Oh. Hotel? Oh. So now this uh, we are at uh, downtown. This is called the United Nations Square on the right side. And uh, this is the very downtown of Casablanca. It, uh, pretty much everything is packed over here. Luxury hotels, offices, banks, cafes, restaurants, markets, pretty much everything is located here. Also, all the transportations, they have their terminals here. There are taxis on the left side. Further down ahead is uh, the port of uh, uh, where, where cruise ships sail and also for tra train stations. And on the right side, you will notice uh, the tramway going all the way there. And in front of us, the Bakhalik Allah Foundation. In front of us on the left side, you'll notice a clock tower and a wall. This wall is covering the Medina. The Medina is... Uh, so on the left side is the wall that is uh, protecting the Medina. And the Medina is, is called... Uh, it's the old part of town. In every Moroccan city, there is one part of the city called Medina which is the old town. It's always protected with, surrounded with a protective wall around it. And uh, the wall, it has many gates around. Those gates, they used to be guarded long time ago against occupation and strangers. And uh, now it's the old part of, uh, of town, which is usually inside, it's like a maze. It's, it has a lot of dead ends, a lot of alleyways. It's made in a way that makes it confusing for, uh, for for the occupation and also it, to make it easy to catch thieves. If there are thieves, they run away, you, they get caught in a dead end. So on the right side, it's a place like for shopping. You see some mini uh, artisans and uh, they sell leather goods and carpets. And inside of the wall, there is a big market where people go for shopping clothes and daily essentials like vegetables, fruits, spices. And now we are headed to, to we will have a, a stop for a pharmacy, a herbal pharmacy to see what spices they have for people who want to buy something. And on the right side, you can see the gate that is the entrance of the Medina here. And up from here, you start noticing a lot of uh, a lot of uh, African people from more Central Africa, because here there is a market called the uh, Marche Senegalese. Most the uh, people who, who are here, they are from different African countries, from Mauritania, Senegal, Ghana, different countries. They have their job here. They start trading this market that you see on the right side. So they uh, they trade here their traditional goods like spices, clothes. So here you see all the people are Africans here. There are many communities that we have in uh, in Morocco. Every city we have like African community, Berbers, Arabs, expats, and they all live in harmony. And there is no difference between anyone. But appreciate now. There comes the ultimate question. Uh, do people in Morocco consider themselves African because they're in, on the African continent or do they consider themselves something else based on the fact that so their region comes, is... Yeah, when it comes... Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, Morocco, it uh, gets confusing. Uh, Morocco is located in Africa, but the inhabitants are not Africans. The uh, inhabitants are Arabs, which they are our Middle Eastern descendants, they come from the Middle East. But the native people, they are Berbers. So these are the native people in North Africa. And Morocco, it's very close to Europe. It's only seven miles from Tangier to Spain. So it's still not part of uh, Europe. So if you, when you see it that way, it's It's very unique. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's like a melting pot that has everything. But of course, it's first of all, it's African because it's part of Africa. But the inhabitants, like the Arabs, the Arabs, we come from the Middle East, so we are not African, we are Middle Eastern descendants. We come from the Middle East. And the Berbers, those are the natives to the whole uh, North African region.
beautiful explanation. Appreciate that guy clears a lot of things up. And yes, family, we're in Morocco, and it's been a beautiful experience and a very unique country and that's uh, positioned in different parts of. You, know, you mentioned the Mediterranean. You mentioned the Atlantic. You mentioned mountains. Yes. There's a combination of this. Yes. Morocco is all very diverse. People. We have we have it all. The Atlantic Ocean, the Mediterranean Sea, the Atlas Mountains, the rivers. Um, it's a family we're gonna, have to start, we're gonna have to start wrapping things up, family, because it's a lot of